Hey, hello, I hope that last mini project went well for you. In this video, we are going to learn a fundamental of programming and it is called a function. Now a function is really just a way of writing one piece of code so you don't have to write it over and over and over and over and over again. There's a benefit and a downside to this. So the benefit to writing just code once and then using it over and over again is that it's less code to maintain so you don't have to worry about fixing something. Uh, if there's a problem, you don't have to fix it 10 times. You can just fix it once and it will take effect 10 different times or wherever you're using it. We'll get into that in just a second. You really just need to fix it in the one place. Now a function has a downside and that downside is it is a little hard to understand at first. So if you are brand new to programming, this might hurt your brain a little bit, but bear with me on this. I want you to Work on this until it makes sense because you're going to see functions in every single programming language. You're going to see functions as commonly as you see variables in the world of JavaScript, and it really does make your code easier to work with. So in this video, I'm just going to show you what a function looks like, and we're not actually going to write a function. We'll do that in the next video, but I just wanna show you what it looks like right now. So let's make this way bigger and we have a function. So it starts with the word function. You can see that my editor VS code has highlighted that it says function. Whereas, you know, if it wasn't a keyword, it would be gray, but it is a keyword. So it is nice and colorful. So we start with the word function and then we give the function a name. So let's give this a name of greeting. And then we put parentheses because it's a function and because it's going to be taking some sort of action, Generally, there are a set of parentheses after it. And then in here, we can just say console.log hello world. And so all the code you want to execute inside of your function goes between these curly braces. It looks a lot like an if statement, actually. And then to execute your function, all you have to do is type greeting with your parentheses, and this will say hello world. So if I open this up in Chrome, you're going to see down here, it says, hello world. Now functions can take these things called parameters or arguments. And so you can say, what is someone's name? So you can pass in a name into this particular function and then you can concatenate it. You can say, hello plus name. And you can use this variable name inside of these brackets. And then to pass in a name, you just pass in like a string or a number or a Boolean or something like that. We're going to pass in a string called Caleb and let's go ahead and refresh our page. And it says down here, hello, Caleb. And so now inside of our function, we have this ability to use any sort of name. And what this is doing is saying, Hey, there's one parameter in here. There's one parameter in here. Let's say that name is now equal to Caleb. And basically what it's doing behind the scenes is saying name is equal to Caleb. Now, if you want multiple parameters, absolutely you can do that. So let's say there's a name and there's an age. So let's say hello name and age is, let's put age in there. And we also need to pass in an age. So there's two parameters in here. We need to make sure we have two parameters in here. We do that by separating these with a comma. And we've actually seen this already with console.log and then we said something and then we had a comma and then said something else. And so what this is saying is there is an object called console. We'll get to objects later, but basically there is a function called log. This is the first parameter and this is the second parameter. And it's no different than our function here called greeting where we have our first parameter and then we have our second parameter. So let's save that, open up Chrome and refresh. And it says, hello, Caleb, age is 30. So now we actually have two parameters or two arguments inside of our greeting function. There's two more points in here that we should look at. One is in more modern JavaScript, we can actually give this a default age as well, or a default name. So let's go ahead and maybe even do that. Let's say default name is going to be Zephyr, my cat, and his age is not 30, he is four. Let's go ahead and get rid of these parameters. So what we're saying here is, if there is no name parameter, that's the first one, it used to look like this. If there is no name parameter, just assume the name is Zephyr. If there is no second parameter called age, just assume the age is four. So let's go ahead, save, 
refresh and it says, hello Zephyr, age is four. That's relatively new JavaScript. It's actually super useful. Many programming languages have had this for many, many, many years. And it is finally the time for JavaScript to use it as well. It is a beautiful feature. Now, the last thing to know about functions, at least for this particular video, is a function can return a value. And we do that with a keyword called return. And this can return anything. So let's go ahead and return space x. And that's all it's going to return. Semicolons are optional when it's on a new line, but eh, let's go ahead for continuity sake. And so when we refresh our page, we're actually not going to see SpaceX shows up anywhere. What this is doing is saying, hey, if this function runs and it is being stored into a variable, that variable's value is now going to be SpaceX. So let's go ahead and save greeting into a variable. So var, I just called var name, variable name is equal to greeting. It's still going to execute the console log stuff because it is still executing this function. However, var name is now going to be whatever is returned here. And that could be an array, it could be an object, it could be a string, a boolean, a number, you name it, it could be anything you want to return, but you only get one. You can only return once. And anything down here does not get executed. So watch this, console.log does not work. So this next example, we're going to see that this console log is not going to work, but var name is also going to be SpaceX as a string. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Okay, I refreshed, it says, hello Zephyr, age is four. The console log did not work. Didn't show up because anything below the return statement doesn't work. So let's go ahead and get rid of it since it's useless. And let's take a look at var name. Look at that, it says var name is SpaceX. Var name here has the value of SpaceX. And you could do anything with variables too. So you could do age, to the exponent of age, which could get really dangerous if you're using a large, large, large number. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be four to the power of four. And that's what the number is going to be. So let's say new number. And okay, it did our regular console logs. And let's type in new number and we see 256. We got that because four times four times four times four is 256. And then lastly, when it comes down to using a function, all we have to do is reinstantiate it, reinitialize it. So let's go ahead and say Caleb and 30. Let's go ahead and create a new one in here. And this is going to be Henry and he is two. And so this is going to be, uh, you know, let's change this return to something that makes sense. Let's just return the name. And so this is going to be default name. And this is going to be Caleb, and this one is going to be Henry. So watch this, as I hit refresh, it says, hello, Zephyr, age is four, then it returns the name, stores it in a variable called default name. Then it goes to the next line, says, oh, there's a function up here, okay, run that code. We gave it a name called Caleb, and we gave it an age of 30. Hello, Caleb, age is 30. Okay, so it does that line, stores it in a variable called Caleb. Next, it goes to line 18, says, oh, there's one in here called Henry. It's running a function called greeting. Just like the other two times, it's gonna say, okay, well, I'm gonna stop here, look for a function called greeting. The first value is Henry. So we're not going to use the default value. His age is two. We're not going to use the default value of four. And so it's going to say, hello, Henry, age is two. And then it's going to return his name, this part here, it's going to store that in a variable called Henry. And sure enough, we see, hello, Henry, ages two. So if we go ahead and say default name, that's from right here, we get Zephyr. Caleb is Caleb. Henry is Henry. So functions are a critical point when it comes to programming in any language, not just JavaScript, but in any language. And they almost all work the same way. You have some way of defining it. You give it a name. You give it some parameters if you want to. Uh, you perform some sort of logic in here, or in this case, we're just doing a console log, and you return something. And then maybe you store it in a variable. And then you can do something with that variable down the line. So that's functions in a nutshell. In the next lesson, let's go ahead and get some serious hands-on practice with functions. We're going to write a number of them. It's going to be fairly fast-paced, but hey, 
You can always slow down the video. You can always pause it and try it yourself. And I'm here to guide you every step of the way.